Toma News presents Bodies Found in a Watery Grave. On the evening of November 20th, 1970, three friends from Sayre, Oklahoma were heading to a football game in Jimmy Williams' new Camaro. They were never seen again and no one knows what happened. But then two weeks ago, some Oklahoma Highway Patrolmen were doing some training on Lake Foss with new sonar equipment and they found something 12 feet below the surface. Two cars. They pulled them up to find a 1957 Chevy and what seems to be Jimmy's white top and there were human remains inside both vehicles. Three bodies were found in the Camaro and three bodies were found in the Chevy, which police think once belonged to Alvy Porter, who is believed to have disappeared in 1969. The identities of the other two bodies are still unknown. News of the findings prompted internet users in the area to speculate as to how the vehicles ended up at the bottom of the lake. Some noted that a stretch of road near the discovery site could have been dangerous, especially at high speeds or in bad weather. Chilling video shows moment woman drowns in Houston flood. The Harris County Toll Road Authority has released surveillance video showing the horrifying moment a Texas woman drove into Houston floodwaters and drowned. Claudia Melgar, 25, was reported missing Tuesday, April 19th, a day after she was last seen on surveillance video driving home just after 6 a.m. Monday morning. Melgar drove around a tow truck blocking a submerged underpass into 17 feet of water, where her car, a white Dodge Durango, began to float and got stuck. Slowly, the water began to rise as Melgar could be seen through her car's rear window shining a light and clearly panicking. Moments later, Melgar's car was completely submerged. A dash cam video at the scene shows a toll road worker chasing the SUV as it passes the barrier. Melgar's body was discovered the next day. She is just one of eight people who have died from flooding in the Houston area. Remains found in submerged car confirmed to belong to girls missing since 1971. The mystery of what happened to Cheryl Miller and Pamela Jackson, two 17-year-olds from Vermilion, South Dakota, who disappeared 43 years ago, has finally been solved with the release of new forensic evidence linking the pair to a submerged car discovered last year. On May 29, 1971, the girls stopped to ask some boys for directions to a party and the boys offered to lead them. However, the boys later said that when they looked into their rearview mirror, the girls' 1960 Studebaker Lark was gone. Then, in September last year, a local fisherman uncovered an upturned car sticking out of Brule Creek. The car was pulled free and police matched a hubcap and the license plate to a Studebaker once owned by Cheryl Miller's grandfather. Inside, they found human remains. Authorities said a summer drought finally exposed the missing car after more than four decades. Mechanical tests reveal the car was in third gear, the car's high gear, when it left the road. This is consistent with an accident at a high speed, which likely caused the car to plunge into the creek. The mechanical tests, the human remains, and other evidence found inside the car have led investigators to conclude that the girls died as a result of an accident rather than foul play. Chinese television presenter stabbed and thrown from a bridge. A tragedy took place earlier this month in southwestern China's Chongqing municipality where the half-naked body of a glamorous female TV presenter was found in a lake on July 11th. 26-year-old Chen Xia was reportedly walking home in Yongchuan district July 7th but encountered two knife-wielding muggers. The men believed the well-known woman would be loaded and reportedly became furious when they realized all she had on her was small change, less than a dollar. Enraged, the mugger stabbed her in the head and neck repeatedly before throwing her into a lake. Still alive, her screams alerted passersby who called police. However, by the time the paramedics arrived, she succumbed to her injuries. The two alleged killers, 27-year-old Chi Peng and 24-year-old Li Shi, were arrested in the early morning hours of July 11th. Some web commenters suggest the facts of the stories don't add up and believe Chen may have been murdered to cover up dealings with powerful forces. However, there is no evidence that this is anything other than a horrific crime. Badly decomposed body of aspiring actress found in water tank in Mexico City. 
An aspiring young actress who'd been missing for nearly a year was found dead in her building's water tank in Mexico City last month. Carmen Yaria Esparza Noriega was last seen on February 18, 2014, leaving her apartment in gym clothes. Family members and friends feared that the 27-year-old had been kidnapped and forced into a sex trafficking ring. Ten months after the young woman's disappearance, Esparza Noriega's decomposed body was found floating in a water tank on her building's rooftop. The water tank brought water to at least 50 apartments in a luxury apartment building in Mexico City's financial district. Residents had noticed a funny taste in the water for some time and notified city officials about it in December, prompting officials to check the water tanks and discover the missing woman's body. The body was identified using Esparza Noriega's breast and hip implants. The autopsy revealed she had been strangled to death. Police are now interrogating Esparza Noriega's ex-boyfriend. The two separated prior to her disappearance. Florida inmate dies after he was locked in a hot shower for two hours. Prison claims it was an accident. Three years after Darren Rainey's death in a Florida prison, the Miami-Dade medical examiner concluded this week that Rainey died from complications of schizophrenia, heart disease, and confinement in a shower stall. Darren Rainey, an inmate at Florida's Dade Correctional Institute, was thrown into a specialized shower in June of 2012 after defecating in his cell. The small shower was controlled from a room adjacent to the shower. Corrections officers left Rainey in the shower for two hours as the stall filled with steam and hot water collected at his feet. Rainey was taking a strong antipsychotic medicine at the time called Haldol, with side effects that include increased body temperature and heart rate. Due to his body's prolonged exposure to water and heat, body fluid collected under Rainey's skin and caused the skin to slip off when prison staff touched his lifeless body. Prison staff later retrieved Rainey's body from the floor of the stall. As staff attempted CPR, a nurse measured his internal body temperature at 102 degrees Fahrenheit, way above the normal temperature. Despite this, investigators are not able to conclude that the shower was excessively hot on the day Rainey died, and the autopsy report claims that the officers had no intention of harming him. Record low water levels in a Texas lake reveals the dead body of a woman who went missing 35 years ago. A drought this year, which severely reduced the water level of Granbury Lake in Texas, has revealed the final resting place of a woman who was reported missing over three decades ago after a violent fight with her husband. A Granbury city worker alerted police after noticing a car sticking out of the lake. Police pulled out the vehicle, which they later determined to be a 1973 Chevy belonging to Helen Holliday, who went missing in 1979. After sifting through the sediment, they found human remains in the car, which they are fairly certain belonged to the missing woman. Holiday was last seen by neighbors on September 29th of 1979 after a bloody fight with her husband, Herman Holiday. At the time, he reported to police that she drove away in the Chevy from the couple's motorhome near Granbury Lake. Over the years, authorities searched the lake several times, but to no avail. Helen was declared dead in 1986, but her body was never found. That is, until a drought this year dried up the lake, revealing for the first time the car that Helen reportedly drove away all those years ago. At the time, Herman Holliday was considered a suspect, but he was never charged with a crime as there was not enough evidence. However, authorities say the position of the pickup, far from the roadway, indicates that it was no accident that the vehicle ended up where it was. This isn't the first time nature has helped police solve a case that went cold years ago. Record low water levels revealed an overturned car in a South Dakota creek last year, and just last week, authorities finally confirmed that remains found inside the vehicle belonged to two girls who went missing in 1971. To see Tomo News coverage of that story, click on the link in the description below. After hotel guests complained about low water pressure, a maintenance worker carried out an inspection. To get to the tanks, someone would have to take a staircase and pass through a locked door equipped with an alarm system that would notify hotel security. The tank is about 10 feet tall and is four and a half feet wide. A ladder will be needed to climb up the side of the tank. Lamb's body was found in the three-quarter full tank. Lamb was last seen acting strangely on the hotel's CCTV footage. Man missing for 23 years found in a submerged car. 
The body of a man missing since 1992 was recovered on Thursday from a car submerged in a Kansas lake. Fremont Oberg went missing in Miami County, Kansas on July 6, 1992. He was last seen driving his navy blue Chevrolet Citation on that day. Oberg's vehicle was spotted underwater by a fisherman who was using a sonar device to find fish in Hillside Lake on March 17 this year. Oberg was still buckled in his vehicle, which was submerged about 20 feet deep in the lake. No foul play is suspected. Authorities said Oberg may have accidentally plunged into the lake. Body found in apartment building water tank after 10 days. Last week in New Taipei City, a whole building load of residents were horrified to discover the bloated body of a man floating in their building's water tank. The water tank provides all the water, including drinking water, to the residents in the building. A few days ago, the residents all began to notice that the water coming from their faucets had a particular rank, reeky smell. The building superintendent said he'd check on it after residents complained, but it took him nearly four days to get around lifting the lid off the water tank and discovering the outlet was partially blocked by a floating and very dead body. Police and firefighters were called to investigate the man's death and remove his remains from the tank. Unfortunately, due to the tank's small opening and the advanced stage of decomposition of the body, it took a day for them to decide how they'd go about accomplishing the removal. The body was too soft and waterlogged to be simply lifted out of the tank with a rope. In the end, firefighters had to punch a hole in the side of the tank and pull the body out. The man's identity has yet to be confirmed by police, although he may be a resident from the building. Body of missing Florida waitress found in neighborhood lake. Police outside of Tampa, Florida have located the body of 33-year-old April Foster, a waitress who disappeared 10 days ago. Foster was last seen around 2.30 in the morning on February 12th, after a night of karaoke with friends. Foster's parents reported her missing after failing to receive their daily phone call from her the next day. Police interviewed Foster's estranged husband and her boyfriend both were cleared of involvement. A man boating on Mango Lake uncovered the first clue into the missing woman's disappearance when his boat struck an object underwater. Another neighbor reported a similar incident. They reviewed footage from two security cameras aimed at the community boat ramp that showed Foster's Chevy turning into the parking lot and driving down the ramp and into the lake. A tragic end to a tragic story, police said. Remains found in New Jersey River is that of missing Wall Street Journal reporter. The remains retrieved from the Passaic River in New Jersey this week has been positively identified as that of Wall Street Journal reporter David Bird, who has been missing for over a year. David Bird was wearing a bright red jacket with two yellow zippers, blue jeans, and sneakers when he was last seen on January 11, 2014. Bird had gone for a walk in the woods near his home without a cell phone or the pills he had to take to prevent his body from rejecting a new liver he had recently acquired. Bird never returned home and investigators were not able to find him in searches of the woods and river near his home. On Wednesday, two men canoeing in the Passaic River around 5 p.m. saw a red jacket in some branches and called the police. Officials later retrieved remains from the water and positively identified them as belonging to Bird through dental records. Authorities have not determined how and when the reporter died and whether foul play was involved. California woman's body found in container inside abandoned car. The body of a 19-year-old woman was found on Sunday afternoon in Whittier, California, hidden in a large container inside an abandoned car. On Sunday, police received a call about an abandoned vehicle. Officers went to Rivera Road, where the car was parked, and after approaching the vehicle, they smelled a strong odor. They opened the trunk and inside an ice chest in the cargo area, they found the body of an Hispanic woman. According to reports, she was shot to death before being hidden in the container. An investigation is ongoing to determine why the woman was killed. Man uses wife's decapitated head to drown himself in an Austrian lake. An elderly man in Austria used his wife's severed head to sink himself to a watery death during an apparent murder-suicide. Police first discovered the dismembered body of a woman on Sunday after a resident of Austria's Lake Traunsee found a suitcase containing body parts close to the lake. Austrian authorities found a second suitcase containing more body parts a day later. Police called in divers who searched the lake and found a man's body almost five meters below the surface, lying at the bottom of the lake. 
The man's body showed no signs of struggle and the 72-year-old was found with two bags tied to his wrists. One bag contained granite rocks while the other bag had a concrete block with the head of his wife encased inside. Postmortem examinations revealed that the woman was likely strangled between December 25th and January 1st. It's unknown when the man drowned. Authorities suspect the man killed his wife and then drowned himself. They say there's no indication that anyone else was involved. Teen swept into stormwater drain found dead in Iowa Lake. 17-year-old Logan Blake traveled more than one mile along a drain before winding up in Cedar Lake, where his body was found Tuesday afternoon. Blake and his friends had been playing frisbee on grounds near Arthur Elementary School after torrential rain on Monday evening. Blake was swept into an open drain, which was obscured by high rushing water. His friend David Bliss tried to pull him free, but was also dragged into the stormwater drain. The entrance to the drain is 56 inches in diameter, and the pipe runs about a mile and a half southwest, where it empties into Cedar Lake. Bliss emerged in Cedar Lake after traveling more than a mile through the drain. He was injured, but able to walk. Blake, however, was not so lucky. Firefighters, police officers, city workers and volunteers searched the area and the lake for any sign of the boy. His body was found in three feet of water, about 75 yards from the exit of the pipe. Some have suggested the tragedy could have been averted if the inlet had been covered by a safety grate. Family and friends gathered in Arthur Elementary School to remember the vibrant teen. They said they will never forget his smile.